On this episode of the Pit Lane Collective Racing, I don't turn when I should have turned. Many people get caught out by slippy track conditions. And I dig deep for my best racing driver excuses. Hello and welcome to the Pit Lane Collective Racing. You join me as I'm heading out on track at Three Sisters Wigan, a circuit which I have visited once or twice in the past. I'm here with one of my karting mates, Jason, and we're gonna try and get some practice in on what is quite a slippery, greasy track. This is just your standard arrive and drive session on a Monday night at Three Sisters. You book on, there's up to 19 other people out there with you. You get 20 minutes and you just go out and try and chase the best lap time that you can do. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, because this is not a dry session, you spend usually your first couple of laps just trying to figure out where the limits of the grip are. And as we head down into Paddock Bend and the left-hander of turn two, we get a pretty quick example of where the grip isn't. I actually struggled to get the car slowed down there, but hey, no crash, we're all good, we carry on. One of the biggest things that you'll feel that's different in these carts, in the wet versus the dry, is the amount of understeer that you'll get going into corners. You will turn the wheel and the cart will go straight as you could just see there as I was going through Luna. So you've got to watch out for that. Keep your input smooth and just try and ease through the corners. As we're heading down the Conrad straight towards the S's, I'm just trying to figure out how I should brake. This is always an exploratory thing because this corner is tricky enough in the dry, never mind in mixed or wet conditions. Watch this guy up ahead as he skates through this left-hander. It is so greasy and treacherous out here. We're gonna go for the move back down the inside into the final corner and my ego remains intact for maybe another minute, we'll see. Fast forward to the next lap and we're heading down into that tricky corner again. I run a bit wide, lose loads of speed here. I just cannot find the grip and he gets me again. Back down the inside. But we get the run on him through the second part of this corner and once again, we are back ahead by the time we head into the final corner. Look at me just trying to find the grip and we get a whack up the backside. He's clearly been able to carry a lot more speed through that corner. No harm, no foul. Thumbs up. Let's carry on. Maybe see if we can hunt him down and get him back a little later in the lap. Uh, okay, I wasn't expecting it to be that quick. Yeah, you can see I'm starting to question how slippy it is out here because as you can see, turning into this right-hander yet again, I just have absolutely no grip. The cart just washes wide. And I'm starting to think maybe something's dropped oil on the track and we're all just, you know, sliding at different points. Because look at this, full lock to the right and the cart is just going straight. And I'm only half on the accelerator at that point, by the way, so I'm not trying to fly through the corner. But even at half throttle, I still couldn't make it around. And evidently, I wasn't the only one out there who was having issues with the surface. I was also starting to have a small suspicion that there might actually have been something wrong with my cart. Now, you know, every driver will tell you, you come off after a bad session and you go, no, nah, there was something wrong with that car. But genuinely, I was really struggling to try and get it turned through some of these corners. And here you can see I'm starting to let some faster drivers go to see if I can just hang with them and just see how their carts are responding versus mine. And you can see as we're heading through the right-hand row Luna here, I just cannot keep this car on the apex and keep the same amount of speed that those guys are, are carrying. And again, as we turn right off the end of the Conrad straight into the S's, you can see I'm just full lock, but I, I, I'm going straight right off the track. And I'm having to slow the cart down so much to try and get through there. Is it me? You can see I'm like, I'm wondering as I go round, because look, again, <laughs> straight off at the last corner. I'm wondering if there's something I'm doing wrong. Maybe I should change my approach to some of these corners. I'm usually pretty good in the wet or mixed conditions, but then there are other people out here having issues as well. It's not like it's just me. So on the very next lap, I took my own advice, ran a deeper line through the corner at the end of the Conrad straight to try and get a better exit out of it. And it clearly worked. Look at me gaining all that time that I was down. But I couldn't shake the feeling that the cart still didn't feel right. And as we turn into this right-hander at the end of the lap, I just understeer completely off circuit again. And I haven't really got any clue why it was happening. 
I always feel a bit bad pulling into the pits and asking to swap a car. It makes me feel like I'm driving in going, well, clearly, you know, I am an absolutely excellent racing driver, but the cart is just too slow and I'd be setting world record laps if I was out there in a fresh car. But all thoughts of pitting vanished from my head when I bumped into Jason on track. And we actually got an opportunity to have a little battle, do the thing that we'd planned to come down and do, which was race each other. for all of two corners. Is that someone else in the bin at turn two? It is. God, this corner was slippy. Clearly, I didn't have the speed to stay with Jason and try and battle him. And even though he very kindly tried to wait up for me, I still couldn't keep up with him. Now they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So I went through the same corner over and over again and every single time I went off the bloody track. So. You know, most of the way through the session, I decided ah, I'm going to call it. I'm going to come in. I'm going to swap a car and see if I'm just having a major skill issue or if there is something wrong with this. Fastest lap time we've managed to set was a 59.099. So I just had to hope that there was enough time left in the session for me to swap carts and get out there and set a lap. Literally will not see him. If you've not got long left, I can just wait, but... Minutes, jump that. There you go, it is now a race against the clock. We've got three minutes to hop in this new car, head out onto the track and do an out lap, and then we're probably only going to get one flying lap in. So let's see if we can make any improvements on that previous personal best. And finally, let's see if it was a skill issue or if there really was something wrong with that car. Even on the out lap, I can feel the difference. But how would we fare as we went through that treacherous right-hander at the end of the Conrad straight, which had been causing me problems all day? Nice, that felt good. We actually gained on the car ahead for the first time through that corner in the whole session. Now we're getting ready to start our one and only flying lap. The timer is just about to run out. We're only going to get this lap in. This is the one. It has to count. Can we go quicker than our previous personal best? And immediately there's yellow flags into turn one and two. Someone's lost it on the apex of turn two. We've seen that before, not ideal. I'm gonna put the delta up on the screen so we can see how much time we're gaining on our previous personal best. And by the time we're heading into Luna, we are nearly a second up. I feel like I have so much grip. The car is turning, we're hitting the apex. We're launching out of Luna and onto the Conrad Street. 1.6 seconds up at this point, nearly two seconds up. Talking to the draft of the car ahead. Let's try and ace this corner that has been giving us a nightmare all day. We tip it into the right-hander, get a bit of oversteer there, but we do manage to control it and we do not run wide, which is perfect. We're now nearly three seconds up as we exit the S's. One more corner to go, but it is one of the trickiest corners on this circuit. We tip the car through the right-hander and just watch that grip come to us as the Delta starts climbing yet again. We're gonna smash this person best as we head across the line and set a 54.985 that is four seconds quicker and i am over the moon all those doubts that maybe it wasn't the car and maybe it was me after all have just been absolutely smashed and i know i've built it up into this big thing but genuinely it did feel good well it's reassuring to know i'm not that bad <laughs> Oh, I was absolutely buzzing as I headed back into the pits and confronted these two guys who <laughs> had got lost. Um, yeah, honestly, I had so much adrenaline after just getting that lap in that I was I was on cloud nine and genuinely more pumped than I felt after some races. Now, you might remember at the start of this video, I said that I'd come down to do some practice with Jason and we'd only seen him once this entire session on track. So I had quite a lot to catch him up on as we exited the carts. Swapped carts in the end. Oh, did you? It, I, it, you went. I felt really bad because bless him, Jason had been waiting on the straight for most of the session to try and see where I was. And I just couldn't catch up to him. I'm going to put both of my best laps in the old cart and the new cart side by side at the end of this video so you can see just how much time I was losing. But that's all from me. Until next time, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.